I'm going to download some data from OpenStreetMap here and use it inside of QGIS and using the Quick OSM plugin. To start this process, I like to have a base map in the view so I can tell where I'm working. And you can actually stream in OpenStreetMap base map by going to the browser panel and going to XYZ tiles and just dragging and dropping uh, into your layer uh, menu. Now I'm using QGIS version 3.22 for this demo. What you see might vary depending on the version of QGIS that you're using. Most of these tools will be available in this format or similar to what they look like uh, if you use a version that's somewhere around that one. Let's choose a city. I'm going to go into Medellin, Colombia and just download some data there uh, just as a sample area for this uh, exercise. Um, to get the data, I will be using the Quick OSM plugin. If you don't have that plugin, you can go to the plugins menu under manage and install plugins and you're going to see a list of the plugins offered with QGIS and you can just uh, highlight Quick OSM and click install. That will put a button up under your toolbars uh, if you have the, the plugins toolbar or you can get to this functionality under vector Quick OSM. Now if you're working with OpenStreetMap uh, for the first time or if you're new, it can be helpful to understand a little bit of the tagging structure that goes along with the, the OpenStreetMap project. Uh, there's a wiki page, the OpenStreetMap wiki, where you can type in any kind of feature and it will show you the tag that is used. For example, if I were to search for park here, I would see that the tag for a park is leisure equals park. Now, this is a key value pair. It has two important parts. The key is leisure and the value is park. Uh, there's other leisure features that have different values on them. Um, some common ones are highway, which is used for roads. Um, amenity is used for lots of different things in OpenStreetMap. If you go to that page, you'll see that there are a lot of possible values for the amenities, such as bar, cafe, fast food, and so on. So if you're not familiar with the, the tags and uh, you don't have them on the tip of your brain, uh, it can be helpful to keep this page open while you work with the Quick OSM plugin. Other than that, the plugin is quite user friendly. Um, I should mention also before I start using it that well, what I'm viewing here as the streamed in uh, background base map might not exactly match the data that I download uh, using this plugin. Uh, there might be more data that I get back from the download that's not depicted here. This is just one rendering of OpenStreetMap and it might not include everything that's uh, in the database. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and use this plugin to get the, uh, all the roads. Those are under the highway um, key and I just want to query for all possible values. Um, perhaps the most important part here is I choose which geographic extent I want to use for the download and I'm going to choose canvas extent which is the area that I can currently see in the view here. Just be careful with this because if you're zoomed way out and you try to get um, uh, all the data it could take a long time or download more data than you expected. Uh, when I'm ready I'm just going to click run query and I'll wait for a little bit for those layers uh, to appear over here in the layer list. Uh, it looks like they've shown up here. Uh, this plugin is quite fast. It's a little slower when I'm recording videos, but uh, you can see how quickly it operated for this area. There are some point features that can take the highway key, but I just want to get the lines here, so I'm going to turn those off. And uh, maybe even if I turn off this base map, you can see the line work that I got back uh, from this download. Uh, later I'll show how we can filter this and style it a little bit, uh, but let's go ahead and download some other things. Um, maybe I'll just go ahead and get um, all the buildings here. So building is also a key in OpenStreetMap, and uh, I've still got it on this canvas extent. I haven't panned the map, so let me just run this query and get those. So now I've uh, gotten all the buildings uh, that are in the OpenStreetMap database. It looks like there are a few that were indicated as points. Um, again, I can turn those off if I want to filter them out for now. Um, I'm thinking just more of how I'm going to compose cartographically this base map. And so I'm just taking roads as lines and buildings as polygons for now. And I can deal with the details uh, later. Um, I showed you how uh, leisure. Uh, park is the way to get the parks, so let me show you that. You could put a specific value in here if you wanted to get uh, specific. Uh, keep it on the same canvas extent, and I can run that query. 
And I imagine I will get some parks back as points and as uh, polygons. Yes, that was the case. Um, what else can I get? Uh, maybe I'll try to uh, get all of the businesses that are shops here. So that's anything under the shop key. I'll just run that query. Some of those could be um, polygons and some uh, could be points as well. I see that data showing up here. Um, and I think that's all for now. Let's go and take a look at what we've got and maybe how we can use it. Um, so one trick will be kind of uh, dragging and dropping these layers to, uh, so that they uh, are in the order that you want. I guess I should mention that uh, before you do anything, uh, you might want to make these layers permanent. So these are just temporary layers in QGIS and they're going to go away when you get rid of your uh, project and close it. So uh, anything that you want to keep here, you should actually uh, right click and export it out and you can save it as some other kind of file, a geo package, a shape file, or something like that. You could take these later and load them into your own database if you're running Postgres or something like that. Um, you just get them so they're not temporary anymore. And so we're going to pretend from this point forward that I have done that, that I have gone and saved all of these layers. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to demonstrate that process. So let's just pretend that I have made these permanent and they're not temporary. Now how could I make a nice looking map out of these? Um, maybe I'll turn some stuff off first um, just to simplify. Um, I want to show the attribute tables that come back from this. If you right click and open the attribute table, uh, you'll see all the, the road features and uh, they're Remember, I used the highway tag to get these, uh, the highway key, and there's actually a highway column here that will show the value that is associated with that key. So this is a really important one because it tells me the type of road that it is, whether it's residential, uh, secondary, primary, tertiary, or even something like a cycle path or a cycle way. Um, also, I've got a ton of other columns here. If people put other tags on, uh, all that data comes, and most of the information is null because there are a lot of tags that most people don't use. Um, but if you go over, there's some ones that could be really helpful. For example, the name and uh, the surface, for example, or the number of lanes. All of those could affect how I might style this. So if I go into the uh, properties of this layer and uh, go to the symbology, I could, uh, for example, categorize these uh, roads based on uh, the value that's under the highway key. So I click classify down here and this just assigns a random color to each type of, uh, of road. And it, this is one place where I could uh, filter out the symbols. So if I don't want to show non-motorized uh, stuff right now, I could just click those off. Uh, maybe remove anything that's uh, not tagged. Uh, that could be one way to start kind of symbolizing this. And then I could go in and apply certain colors and widths to the major roads versus the, the minor roads. Uh, another thing you can do is if you want to use SQL to set filters on what's visible, you can right click the layer and go to a filter and there's a little query builder where you could do that. Also, you could label these. So if I highlight and on my uh, labeling toolbar here, I can open the layer, the label options. And maybe we could put single labels on here based on that name um, field that came across. Right here, and uh, we could do things such as changing the size and color of those labels. Maybe I'll make them a little bit lighter here. Another thing you might want to do is uh, you could set the um, scale that they will appear at. So if you go over here to some of the rendering options, you could set uh, scale here. So for example, I'm going to make it, let's make it so they turn off when I go out beyond uh, 20,000 or 1 to 20,000. See how those layers turned off? And also the placement engine right now has uh, conflict detection, so that's why it's reducing the number of labels that appear as I go out. You can use all these options down here to modify those. 
Um, we can show buildings here. Uh, sometimes uh, it can be nice to if you want to adjust the symbology. We can go down and take the stroke uh, off of the end and maybe make it a nice, uh, like a little bit lighter color here. That shows us that there's buildings, but it's not making the map look real messy. Um, we could change the park style, maybe change it to a green color. If we want, we could even outline that in green. Just change the stroke to a little bit darker. Okay, so there's lots of modifications that you can make here to your base map uh, using the OpenStreetMap data. Uh, using the attribute tables, you could select out and further filter the information that you get. Be aware that you will need to uh, deal with situations where you get back both points and polygons, for example, the shops. Um, maybe I would symbolize these shops so that they look more like a building and uh, these point ones so that they look like, uh, look like uh, darker and smaller points that will show up. Uh, it's up to you. I hope this tutorial has been useful and that you're excited to go get some data from OpenStreetMap now and begin styling it to make your own base maps.